Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ceftec. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We're going to start today's episode by going to the abyssal wastelands. And since we need to make the oblivion catalyst, I came over here so that we can hunt some shadow creatures. Oh, I have night vision. Very good. Our first catch of the day. Well, technically it was night, but you know, you get the point. What is that? Hello? Dark offspring. And he doesn't drop anything. We did not manage to get a crazy amount of shadow gems, but it's okay. We have 6 of the big ones and 28 of these. And we need a total of 8. In the meantime, I will do some mining and I will meet you back at the base. Alright guys, I spent maybe an hour or an hour and a half on mining and we are filthy rich. We have tons of ore in this one, tons in this one and a lot in my inventory. So we're good. And now we can get back to making the Oblivion Catalyst. We need 2 more shards of the Oblivion and then we need to sleep as usual and for making the shard of the oblivion we need a sacrifice come on don't fight it it's for a better cause and if i'm not wrong you should be full of pe right yes yeah i think the recipe is going to be correct so we activate the ritual we get rid of you and we should be fine the shard of the oblivion i meant the oblivion catalyst yes we already got the shards of the oblivion now we need to make you which is not that expensive ah, actually i was looking for some bones thank you we can go home before that guy arrives. So we're going to have one gateway key, one stack of apples and one portal to the abyssal wastelands. The apple is for eating. Technically speaking, we don't need to go to the abyssal wastelands today, but I'm guessing later on there is going to be a quest for it. Or at least there's going to be an item that we need further down the line. But for the moment, I'm just looking for liquefied corallium. Not that one, the ore. Greg's girl. Hi, we have 25 seconds of corallium plague. <laughs> nice. I'm thinking that was not the best idea in my life. We're fine, okay. We can go look for ores. I was hoping we can use our pickaxe. Yes. There's something over there. That is corallium ore. This is the gem, right? It's not the one we want. I think it's over there. It's very dark. Yes, we're looking for this one. Liquefied corallium ore. There is one more over there. I did find more very good well i'm guessing by now you guys get the gist i need to gather a lot of these liquefied corallium ore we need to process them in a crusher and then convert them into ingots and then we are going to make a very good armor i personally do not recommend this to anyone because after one hour of mining you're like do i really need that armor but we have 38 right now we have almost a stack of ingots at the base and i also had to make a small infrastructure in order to get here because according to the wiki the liquefied corallium ore generates under y level 22 so I had to make a huge staircase. There is more over there. We have 45 right now, so that is 90 ingots, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough because the armor itself is incredibly expensive. You need to make the basic armor parts and then you need to upgrade them using plates and each of them requires six. So that is a crazy number of ingots, but we will see. Okay, I have processed every single corallium that we had. I'm making corallium pearls and let me see if we can make the armor. We have literally 164 ingots, so I hope we can. We can make the helmet, we can make the chest plate, we still have 97 ingots left, that is a good sign. The leggings are far cheaper, so I'm very happy, and the boots as well, very good. And here is the boots, we have 70 ingots left, okay, I mind a lot. But if we wear this armor, we are going to have night vision, and we're going to have speed too. And without even enchanting it, it gives us a crazy amount of armor. But since we also have 88 levels of experience left, let us see what kind of enchantments can we get. Why is it always protection 3? Protection 4. Nice. And unbreaking. Unbreaking is always good. With protection 4. Okay. Aqua affinity and protection 4. Oh, we have feather falling 4. Nice. So we can put it on the boots. I know what you're thinking. I look very handsome. I know that. Thank you. Now that we have the armor from Abyssal Craft, I can walk really fast and I do have night vision and I have a decent protection, I think it's time to focus on our industries. So we need to remove some of these machines and transfer them to our industrial area. The pump jack is going to stay here because the oil is here, but these guys have to go. Let me gather some materials, transfer some of the items, and I'll be right back. I wanted to move and set up most of our machines off camera, but then I realized it's actually not a very good idea because there are so many things that we have to do that uh, I can't really cut all of them out. And just in case I make a mistake, some of you guys should probably see it in order to tell me. 
right? This is our distillation tower and that orange one was the output. I did make also a fluid router from immersive engineering, which I have no idea how it works, but we're going to figure it out soon enough anyways. We take one bucket of naphtha and we tell it to extract it from the bottom. This should be the bottom, right? Yes. Then we take one bucket of diesel and we choose the red one. And if we keep the pipe separated, this should be for naphtha, this should be for diesel. Also, I have a slight problem. If I connect this guy directly to the distillation tower in order to provide it with power, I get electrocuted by the wire. So can we put you to output, then put you on top, and then put you on top? Can we make a connection? Yes. Very good. And you're charging up. We need to process naphtha and diesel separately. We need naphtha in order to make plastic, so that's the first one that we're going to try and automate. And I think this is a tank? Yes. I did not mess up the dimensions. Very good. And I think we can just fill it up from the top. I changed the configuration for the pipes. The top one is for naphtha and it will go inside this tank. The bottom one is for diesel and it is going to go inside another distillation tower. And the entire reason that we're going to need another distillation tower is that some of you guys have been telling me that we need to process this diesel into kerosene so that we would be able to make fuel for the rocket because our main goal in this chapter is to go to the moon one thing that i honestly forgot is that we also need diesel in order to generate steam so that we would be able to make propane for the plastic so this is our boiler and this tank is also going to be for diesel it is hooked up to our distillation tower over there and the boiler also requires water someone told me in the comments of the previous episode that you can only hook up five pumps to your generator over here and he is absolutely correct so this one is extra you see if i right click on this one it says it's not connected to a valid machine so yeah if we give power to the pump and the redstone signal you should fill it in with water very good i was also thinking why is the extraction of the boiler on the top and then i noticed yeah because you actually need to put a pump over there what i'm trying to say is that it's really nice of them to think about aesthetics not that this is a work of art but you know at least we want it to be neat so this is our chemical mixer and it is going to make us propane let me get some oil and we're going to give it a test we should have a barrel of oil yes we take this one. Don't really know how we're going to transport oil, but for the moment, we're gonna do this. Just for testing. Just in case you didn't know, if you have a tank from immersive engineering and you're having a fluid inside and you do not have the uh, Weyla thingy, you can just hold the bucket and it will tell you which fluid is inside. So you did not extract diesel. Aha. Uh -huh. Will you do it like this? No. I think you might need a pump, but I'm not sure. So we're going to have a fluid extractor from Cyclic and then we use these pipes. Now we're getting diesel and we're making steam. And our chemical mixer is also getting steam. Very good. So with this out of the way, we can now focus on bringing the rest of the machines and automating plastic. I have transferred our liquid processor and our plastic maker over here as well. And now we need to provide them with power. And for that, we're just going to use thermoelectric generators because these guys do not consume that much RF anyways. And I think four of them is already going to be an overkill. That's going to be enough. All of them have power by now. That is very good. Except for the pump, but um, I need to go and get more wires. It's fine. We should also add some extractors over here so that the fluid goes from this machine into this one and from this one into this one. For making propane, we are already providing this guy with steam, but now we also need to provide it with naphtha. Of course, the pipes are not going to stay like this. I'm going to fix them later on, but for the moment, are we getting plastic? Well, we are getting propane. Oh yeah? It's working. We have half a stack of plastic. Very good. I'm honestly very happy today because today is one of the first days that we managed to do actual progress. I'm not saying the other days were garbage, but uh, you know, making bread is not progress. One stack of plastic from just a barrel of oil. That's really good. Just before we continue with the rest of the episode, which is basically trying to automate our pneumatic craft setup, there are a few quality of life improvements that I don't mind trying out. Because in any case, we cannot get too far with pneumatic craft today because our oil production is garbage. The pump jack needs like 2000 RF per tick and we're providing it with, I don't know, 300 RF per tick maximum. But we have 51 buckets of oil. That's not bad. We can at least try and process this one and then start working on quality of life improvements. The first quality of life improvement that I noticed is that we can make a sink. This guy. And the recipe is not that expensive. We just need aluminium plates. So here is our first sink and the second one. And since we have fluid extractors, we don't need pumps anymore. 
Another thing that we are always short on is cold coke. We do have one advanced coke oven, but I was thinking maybe we should add another one. Cause to be honest, these guys are relatively easy to automate. We can set it up over here, which is next to our base, and I can check on it from time to time, and it will always be chunk loaded. There is a chunk loader in the mod pack, but I don't honestly think we need it right now. And if you guys remember, the issue with the reinforced coke oven is that we need to power the preheaters. And since we are generating creosote oil, I was thinking we power it with a combustion generator, which does not have a complicated recipe and honestly speaking it really doesn't happen that often in this pack this is not going to be something super complicated we're just going to have a pipe over here so that we can extract the creosote oil and put it in the generators and just connect everything using wires also you to you I'm also providing it with some creosote oil so that we are generating some RF at least. Another very important question that I have is that if you put the crate on top and give it coal will it go in? No, because you know, we actually used the hopper on top and I was like, okay, maybe it functions. It does not. It's neither keeping up with the RF nor the fuel, but I'm guessing we are going to get upgrades for the generators in the next age. So I'm not too worried. Just out of curiosity, how would you even cover this? It looks really bad. I really don't know. Maybe something like this. It has a very weird shape. Don't ask me why it looks like that, because I also have no idea. We have a color palette for the base and I just want it to be consistent. I do understand it does not look very natural, but... Um, at least it's the same color. Also, we have a ladder over here and we can deposit the coal. A chimney would have been nice. I took three smoker blocks from the twilight forest, so maybe we can make this one? And yes, we can. I had no idea we had the tower wood. And as usual, I always forget how you work. Like this? Yes. It needs a redstone signal. In my defense, this would have looked much better if I knew how to make a chimney. So as usual, planning is good execution is horrible. I remembered that there are huts in the twilight forest and they do have chimneys. So I literally copied the exact same design and I also brought a tree. And just in case you're wondering what it is that we are trying to achieve over here is that I received a comment on the previous episode that my front porch looks like garbage. And I do agree. So we're cleaning up. Of course, we're not cleaning up everything today. We're just doing as best as we can. The alloy kilns that we have from immersive engineering are not very useful to us because we don't need them in order to make alloys but we need it in order to make black iron. So I was thinking we hide them over here. Yeah, I would say this looks cleaner. There's also something else that I want to see if we can automate and that is the advanced alchemical condenser. So it normally takes like three ingredients and we have three retorts. So I was thinking maybe if we put a hopper and give it the ingredients, it will go in. No. Yeah, I was hoping that you can provide it with stacks and stacks and stacks of items and it will give you the potion, but no, that's not gonna happen. I thought we were going to have two alchemical condensers so that we can brew the two potions that I want. Then I was looking at the recipe and I noticed we can make a transmutator from abyssal craft. And this guy is going to unlock a lot of recipes for us and is also very useful in order to make nether bricks. I mean the actual bricks, not the block. So obviously I had to come to the nether so that we can go to the fortress and get some blaze rods. And also some of these nether bricks. Oh, they give you the powder. Damn. <laughs> and the powder itself seems to be acceptable. Okay, then I'm fine with that. Oh, and by the way, just in case you're wondering, I do have a highway which goes to the fortress. The recipe of the transmutator has not been changed and all we need is a bucket of corallium and some corallium bricks. So here is our corallium and I think we should be able to vein mine the chains, right? And if we smelt them, we will get corallium stone and if we smelt it again, we will get the bricks. Very good. We have 64 ingots left. We need two blocks. So 18 is enough. This also gives you access to diamonds, but I don't know what this is. Oh, we need a crystallizer for that. Okay. I thought we were going to need another transmutation gem, but apparently not. We can just make it. And you consume one durability. Okay. I put it down, but can I harvest it? Yes. <laughs> And we can just get nether bricks. So I just discovered something very irritating. This is a sink and here is a bucket and you cannot get water. I wanted to use at least one sink in order to fill in the alchemical condensers with water since we cannot automate it any other way, but that is not possible. Can I do this? Yes. But in any case, we also need to work on a mixer and I think we can make a mixer mark two because it just needs compressed iron. I should correct myself blocks of compressed iron, which we can only make it in a metal press. The reason that a mixer is very important to us is that it will help us automate dough, leather, and pulp. It only has three pages of recipe, but those are recipes that we use constantly. Of course, this is a Mark II machine and it is going to consume 40 RF per tick, so we are going to power it using a thermoelectric generator, and this time instead of wires, 
we're having cables from cyclic and the thermoelectric generator is going to power the machine itself and the pump also we can't really automate this thing so i was thinking we are going to have two crates we are going to use one of them as an output chest and the other one as an input chest i just gave it salt and flour and after processing it it gave us dough so the bread situation has been solved very good let us get back to pneumatic wrap so i have already set up our pressure chamber and we do have two crates over here one of them is for input and there's an extractor down there which will take the items and put them in the chamber and we also have an output crate which will take the items from the pressure chamber so now we need to provide it with pressure i made two compressors and we're going to connect them to the pressure valve which is down here in the center i think for the moment we're just going to supply them with coal so what we're going to do is that we're going to have another crate with an extractor so that we can put the coal in the compressors i hope that works another very important thing that we should do is that we should set up a system so that it does not explode so we're going to have a pipe over here and i also made a gauge which we're going to put over here and we're going to add one safety tube module the gauge will emit a redstone signal which is two times the bar okay and we want a maximum pressure of four so we're going to have a comparator over here and we need eight pieces of redstone that seems to be eight pieces of redstone okay so whenever the gauge reaches four bars it should emit a redstone signal and it will activate the safety valve and we will lose pressure and the pipes will not explode or at least that is the plan we will see if it works we also have two more devices that we need to hook up one of them is the charger and the other one is the uv light box and i'm hoping we can just do this right we are getting pressure very good and of course we also have the plastic maker so you have to come on this side the plastic maker needs heat so we do have a vortex tube over there we put the plastic maker on top we just have to add the heat sink over here and add a pipe like so actually the pipe goes over here yes and you're heating up very good we seem to be okay but uh I'm not sure, we have to let it run for a while. One very small point that I missed is that you will read the redstone signal based on the direction that the gauge is facing, not the pipe itself. So basically, I just had to put it on this side. Anyways, I also wanted to make some speed upgrades and for that I had to upgrade our industrial area. The first distillation tower that we have is going to take oil and it will give us naphtha and diesel. Then we are taking that diesel and we are putting it inside a second distillation tower because that will give us three additional fluids. One of them is kerosene which we need in order to make rocket fuel. The second one is gasoline which I have not found any use for it but the third one is lubricant which i used in order to make some speed upgrades we don't have a crazy amount of each one but it's not that bad i think one more item that we can add to pneumatic craft machines so that they do not explode is a security upgrade which does not have a complex recipe very good so we put one in you one in the charger and in the compressors the plastic maker does not take the upgrade so it's okay we also need to start processing some oil because i need plastic well, so far we have five buckets we need four more because the next item that we want to start working towards is the assembly line and for that i think we are going to need eight pcbs that's a lot of transistors and capacitors we have 34 buckets of plastic but that's not gonna be enough each plastic sheet is going to take one bucket well at least for the moment we should start by making some green plastic so that we can make some pcbs so let's start with that pcbs are also very time consuming let's make half a stack with the speed upgrades it's not that bad it's ready <laughs> nice and we should get it in this crate yes and now begins the beautiful process of putting them inside uv light box i call this the beautiful process because unfortunately we do not have access to advanced filtering systems so we cannot automate this completely i have to wait for it to reach 100 percent and then take it out manually and you can only have one pcb in the uv light box so for 32 it's going to take some time in the meantime let's make some transistors and capacitors i think we just make half a stack of each one capacitors already i dropped some pcbs into etching acid are they complete oh yeah they are okay good these cyclic cables are incredibly buggy i do understand that they want to make the mod pack difficult but they're just making it buggy just give us access to ender IO conduits it's not that bad transistors are also ready this has been my job for the past hour i just come over here i take some plastic and then run back to the pressure chamber it's not very good for our food situation let us see how far we can progress we need a lot of pneumatic cylinders we need two io units one laser and a drill which requires a core oh it's not that bad i think no it's not that bad and i think we have everything yes so here is our drill here is the platform and now we need the controller which we can make we should also invest in a wrench i think we're going to have the assembly line over here so we're going to have an input 
and an output. Then we need to have the drill and the laser and I think the platform goes over here. The controller can go anywhere I assume. Here we need an output chest and one input chest and we need to use the wrench on this one so that we can change it to input. Provide it with pressure so we connect it. And you will also get a security upgrade. Very good. Now what we have to do is to try and get the drill and laser program from the Amadron tablet. So let me see how we can order it. Most of the trades using the Amadron tablet are going to require something called a stabilized metal from Steve Cards. The recipe for it is not very complicated and I have it in the arc furnace. The problem is it's not working. I don't know why. So unfortunately we need to sell our kerosene in order to buy that metal and then use that metal in order to buy the programs. Five buckets of kerosene will give us two metals so we have 30 buckets. That's 12? I think. He took our payment and we got 12. Very good. But we need two more metals so we need more oil. I should have kerosene. Yes, I have kerosene. It's a very weird way of trading, I know, but the recipe in the arc furnace is not working and I don't know why. We have the program. Very good. And finally in this guy we have enough air pressure. So if I give you 10 blocks of compressed iron, will you start working? Yes, yes. Take your time. If we give your majesty a bit of speed upgrades, maybe you work faster? Yes, yes. We have the advanced pipes. That's very good. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Next episode we are going to try and focus on getting the rocket and going to the moon. We'll see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.